200 years ago, economist David Ricardo dreamt of the world we currently live in. Your iPod includes parts from at least five different countries. The declining cost of transportation and communication allowed international trade to soar to 16 times what it was in the 1970s. But global output has not increased at these same levels, so there have been winners and losers. There aren't that many manufacturing jobs today. Um, about 15% of jobs here in Ontario or across Canada are your traditional blue collar manufacturing jobs. So we shouldn't be, we shouldn't have this impression that somehow there's an army of workers who are in the factories and in the, on the assembly lines, uh, you know, working. Uh, it's just not the case. In fact, it hasn't been the case in North America for probably 30, 40, 50 years. We've been a service economy since the 50s. Increases in trade over the past 30 years come from intensified trade with China, Europe, and Latin America. Manufacturing jobs flow to cheaper markets. Does this mean the end of the Canadian factory worker or of the Canadian factory? We are stepping out onto the global stage and we are finding with each success that in fact we can really conquer global markets and we are seeing now over time, I mean there was a time where 90% of Canadian exports went to the United States. We're now down to about 75%. Part of that is obviously as a re it's a, a reaction to what's happening to the U.S. but the good news is is we are making it up by exporting into other and new markets and I think that's really encouraging. Since the Industrial Revolution, manufacturing has been the key to economic advancement. Manufacturing reached its peak during the Second World War when it accounted for 29 percent of Canada's GDP. Today, manufacturing accounts for only 13 percent of GDP, less than half of its peak level. Where Canadian manufacturing used to be concentrated in the auto sector, it's now shifted towards the energy sector in Alberta. I would think that the automobile almost single-handedly created the middle class in, in, in North America. So uh, with the industry of, of road building, bridge building, uh, car manufacturing, car repair, uh, materials, supply for cars, um, you know, the insurance for cars, you know, and then the mobility and the new consumer and the ability to, uh, to be mobile also uh, enabled uh, a vast population to begin to acquire and to build uh, a pretty comfortable life for themselves with the, with the automobile. So the, I kind of saw the automobile as this kind of core core uh, technology that, that, uh, that shaped the 20th century and the landscape of the 20th century. Some argue that national economies like Canada's require manufacturing. Germany remains a manufacturing powerhouse. What changes would Canadian manufacturing have to undergo to follow in Germany's footsteps? There are also those who argue that manufacturing is overrated. Consider Japan, where dependence on exporting products has left the economy stagnating for 20 years. Which model is best for Canada? We will be examining this question with in-depth interviews featuring photographer Ed Bertinsky, with Jim Milway of the Martin Prosperity Institute, and with Andrea Mendel Campbell, author of Why Mexicans Don't Drink Molson's. By the end of the week, we hope to be able to answer the question, is Canadian manufacturing dead?